In Cheyenne, affordable housing and living wage jobs are a chicken and egg scenario. People can't afford to live in Cheyenne as housing prices rise, but companies don't move to Cheyenne because there aren't enough available skilled workers. How would you tackle this problem? Okay, so this is one I've been working on since uh, February, March. I have met with as many people as will meet with me, engineers, architects, um, planners, uh, developers, builders, tradespeople, uh, to try to find out what's going well and what's not going well. And when it comes to housing uh, and affordable housing, I think there are, there are a couple of things that we need to work on. Uh, one of them is infrastructure, and the other one of them is our rules and regulations. So starting with rules and regulations, we passed the UDC, the Uniform Development Code, in 2012. It won national, it won international awards. You know, it's, it's a very pretty document. And, uh, but I think now, eight years later, I, I think that we need to go back and review that to make sure that our goals, like making housing more affordable, having more housing, are met by the rules and regulations that we have. Um, I'll give you one example that I've been talking about. Uh, when we build an apartment building right now, you can only cover 60% of the, uh, the area with impervious surface, so the building and the parking lot, and the rest of it's going to be in landscaping. And I love landscaping, but that's 40% of the property that's not being used. And as I'm doing research, I'm finding that a lot of communities, if you uh, meet certain criteria, can go up to as much as 80%, which means you can get more units on the property, the cost per unit would be lower, and we could help with, uh, because land is so hard to get here in Cheyenne, we need to be able to maximize what we're doing there. Um, so I think we have some systemic problems with the UDC that we can, we can overcome and, and work on it. I uh, met with Mayor Kinski from Sheridan, and he shared with me that they had a similar concern in Sheridan. And they hired a group called the Zuber Group. And I, I've tried as hard as I can to find the Zuber Group, and I can't find them. But I'm sure there's other groups like that out there. And they met with all the same people that I've been meeting with, and they talked about what are all the concerns they have. And they met with city staff in Sheridan and, and the planners and understood their perspective. And then they tried to match the UDC, their UDC, with their community goals. And they found 98 instances where they didn't match. And they recommended language to fix that. And once they did that, their Main Street, I mean, they saw a boom in, in that area. My uh, wife in, uh, is from there. My son lives up there. So as I drive up there, I can see the changes that have happened. And it's been, it's been pretty spectacular. Uh, so I think we need to do that. The second thing is that there's a developer right now that could build 192 apartment buildings and 300 single family homes under $250,000 in city and land already annexed in the city. But he can't do it because there's not a sewer line there. So when we built, uh, we designed the UDC, or the UDC, the EUL, the Enhanced Use Lease on the base for the 400 apartments that'll go there and for the commercial property, they took the sewer capacity for that project and allocated it there. So He's ready to build today, but he can't because there's no sewer. Interesting is the Southside Water and Sewer District is there, and they have the capacity now to do it. So I think as mayor, we need to work with outside agencies and assure them that we'll be a good partner because he could build those things starting today. Uh, but the other thing is, is that we need to build a sewer line uh, there. We also probably need to build a couple roads. And I don't think we use all the tools. Um, you know, I don't know why we couldn't do a TIF district for that area, and it would be a large area. And as those homes come online, the, the property taxes for that could go back to pay back the cost of doing the infrastructure. And I don't know how long it would take. I haven't done the analysis, but it wouldn't take very long to, to uh, repay that, that cost, and especially as builders build and, and hook onto it. Uh, and, we, and we could do that and speed up that process and fast track it. So I think we need to look at the idea that the community owns the infrastructure, and we need to look at where our community goals are, what, what our goals are. We want to build more affordable housing. Where could we do that? And put the infrastructure in. And the old saying, if you build it, they'll come. In Cheyenne, I think that's really true. A perfect example of that is Sweetgrass. Um, I met with uh, Tim Wilson and Jerry Jessen, who was the, their board chair. Mm -hmm. It's been, I don't know, 15 years ago or maybe a little longer than that ago. And we talked about where we were going to grow. And I said, I look at the area south of LCCC and South Cheyenne is the area that we have the biggest capacity for growth. But what we don't have is a water line. So when were they going to build that great big water line? And they shared it was 25 years down the road 
I'm like, guys, I think it needs to be five years down the road because if we don't build the infrastructure, we'll have no way to build. And the city, if it's green growing or it's ripe and rotting, we don't want to be ripe and rotting. And so to their credit, when they did their next big meeting, uh, their goal setting meeting, they looked at that and they changed their rules or their, their vision for when that needed to be done. They built that water line and now Sweetgrass is building 2,000 acre development. Um, and the first phase of that is almost 100% sold out and they're getting ready to open their second phase. And uh, I think that that's what we need to do is, is to look at what our goals are and how we can get those um, that infrastructure in place to do it. So we need to fix the rules to make it easier, more timely. Um, I'll tell you another thing I've learned is we have a flow chart. When you start a process and that flow chart tells you how long it's going to be and it's really pretty. But the problem is, is that when you get done with a phase, the, the city has so many days to, um, to answer back. And each phase through that process, it costs the developer a week. So if we would just, just tweak that by a couple of days, we could save a month or more in the process from the time from the start to the finish of that project. So I think there's a lot that we could do to help with that. Mm -hmm. Any additional thoughts on that chicken and egg piece? You said, you know, build it and they will come. Is that, I mean, anything else that you want to say as it relates to companies coming and that skilled worker piece? Well, a couple of things come to mind. One of them is that I've met with two or three businesses recently that told me that if they knew what it was going to take to develop in Cheyenne, they wouldn't have started their project. Um, so we've got to get that fixed because when we, uh, when we screw up those opportunities for those kinds of companies, they're going to talk and those, fewer of those opportunities are coming to Cheyenne. So we've got to make sure that we're more business friendly and we do a better job of making that process work. Um, as far as the chicken and the egg, um, I'm, I'm thinking that if we don't have housing, I don't think that um, businesses are going to come because I think they're, they're nervous about their workforce. I think we've got to get that fixed. I'm told by, like the chamber, that the number is 3,000 units were short. I talked to a member of the Planning Commission yesterday. He thinks we're 5,500 units short um, in the number of housings that we need to, to be healthy here. Uh, that's apartments, houses, you know, all kinds of housing. So I, I think that that's our biggest problem. I think when we talk to folks who are coming from like Western Nebraska wanting to move to Cheyenne, get away from home but not get too far and get a job, take a job, and they see what the cost of housing and the lack of housing here is, the number of people that we have in Colorado who are living there, not because they want to live in Colorado, but because they just can't find housing here. Uh, about 500 of those are, are base employees. And I can think of, if you get those 500 people to move back to Cheyenne, the, uh, the impact that that would have on our economy. Uh, so I think we need to fix housing first. So I've thought a lot about that. Um, and it's kind of a, a three pillar thing again. Um, we have the community college out here and I've spoke with them. Um, excuse me, glasses. Um, and they're willing to train people to do anything we want them to be trained in. So we can bring any manufacturer here um, when we think of infrastructure, we always think of the roads, we think of water, we think of electricity, we think of sewage. But what about things like fiber and communications? What are we doing to encourage those to other places, to the industrial parks, so that if companies come here, they have the high-speed internet that they need to have? The same with our residential. Why aren't we encouraging more of this, working with our communications partners, to put in fiber in areas that when we start building these houses that we can do telecommuting more often. I mean, people from the coast, on either coast, want to come to Cheyenne. They want to come to the inner um, Midwest. But their concern is they don't have the things that they need. The apartments right, up, right there, excuse me, um, have CenturyLink fiber, Luna fiber now. And because of that, they're able to have doctors and radiologists move into them and be able to sit there and read all day long in the comfort of their own home. Shows that um, telecommuting is a very, very important part. Now, as far as businesses and residential, we need to rework the UDC code. We need to make it so that it is convenient, so that it's understandable, so that it's steadfast, so that it's safe, so that it makes sense today and it makes sense in 20 years. So that when businesses come to Cheyenne, they don't have the excuse of, well, if I had to do this all over again, I would never come back here because it's ever changing. 
Uh, today's rule is not tomorrow's rule. Uh, for instance, somebody took a parking plan into uh, the planning office, and when they took them in there, they said, well, we think these parking spaces would work better over here. So they went back to their engineers, they paid their engineers to have this changed, and they brought it back, and that time they said, well, no, I think the parking spaces would work better over here. How do you run a city like that? There should be a pamphlet. When you come in, this is what we want. If you bring this to us in a specific period of time, we'll tell you, go ahead, let's start building. We also need to make sure that people can get the money out of their property, out of their land value. Instead of building on 60, build on 80. Um, instead of having to have $112,000 worth of trees and grass and um, water that wasn't there before, um, maybe a little bit less, a little bit more sense to it. Um, but the UDC code really needs to be worked. It's, it's stifling everything that goes on in Cheyenne, period. It, it, that's the biggest problem that Cheyenne has. Our kids, our greatest assets, are leaving because we don't have things for them to do here. It's not because we don't have a labor force. It's because we don't have labor. We don't have the jobs that fit them. We have incredibly intelligent kids, incredibly intelligent. Our schools are second to none from Triumph High to Central High School. Any one of those schools have very capable kids. The University of Wyoming, LCCC, has one of the finest nursing schools in the country, one of the finest radiology programs in the country. They teach trades. They teach everything you want to have. There is absolutely no reason we don't have businesses here, but we convince them not to come here. We almost buy them off by building a UDC code that just stifles business. Yes, ma'am.